Hi, Susie, I have my two horses. Yes, and I've got Chai T here. You're ready to go. I'm ready to get these horses saddled. The barn's all cleaned, and we're ready to get them going. And you know what, Ed? I think it's so important that we keep getting better with our horses. Exactly. As a matter of fact, and that's what's great about this program. Hello, everyone. I'm Ed Adams. And I'm Susie Arbo. And welcome to Better Horses. And we start off the show with a trip down to Arizona. World-class trainer Al Dunn will give us the correct usage in cutting horses with a mechanical cow. Welcome back, professional liberty trainer Dan James, as he continues his four-part series on how to transition from the ridden horse to the liberty horse. Texas Cowboy Hall of Famer Craig Cameron from the Double Horn Ranch will display the benefits of tying up your horse. And finally, Nathan Smith from the Show Me Christian Youth Home teaches leadership skills that helps kids learn valuable life lessons through the use of responsible horsemanship. So that sounds like a great show. So if you love horses or even thinking about getting into the horses, this is the program for you. And it's the only horse show on your local broadcast television station. And now airing every Monday on RFD TV. So before you go saddle up, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We'll be right back. Mark Animal Health has what we call an unconditional commitment. Our team members have spent countless hours you know, relocating horses, finding horses, and, and helping those in need. Going and helping in the California wildfires. One of the passions we have as a team is not only helping horses, but helping people. And when we can put the two together, that really lights us up. It's, it's just who we are. Cow track mechanical cow is good for many things. You know, reining horse trainers sometimes use it to help their horses learn to roll back correctly. You know, in this case, I'm gonna talk about working a working cow horse, like a horse that you're gonna use for the boxing or even down the fence with the flag. So with the cow track like this, I make sure my horse backs up really good and that he steers pretty well to the right and to the left like most cow horses should. And then I step up to the flag and I start it slow as not to scare the horse, but I step up to it like this, like I'm gonna move it. And then I go with it, teach my horse to stop with it. I try to stay, take a step back so they load up on their hocks and then step to it. But I keep my horse up at an angle, like keep both eyes of the horse on the flag. Just like that. I keep both eyes of that horse. If he looks away, I'll point his nose up in with, with my inside rein a little bit, but I'll keep his eyes on that flag. Unlike a cutting horse that sometimes I like to be dead square with the cow and go totally parallel, I like my cow horses to look up into that cow just a little bit more like this. That way they have that attachment to the cow. Plus, with a, with a cow horse, we have a tendency to step to the cow and then break off. So I ride with it, stop with it, load up on the hocks by stepping back a step, go with it, using mainly cow side leg, stop back, don't impart my, my opposite leg until the horse starts through the turn. What happens, most people, they'll get over here like this, and right here they get kind of excited, so they take their outside leg and they get into their horse with it. And then the horse reverses the arc, or shoulders into the cow. So what you want to do right here when you back your horse up, you want to kind of keep your cow side leg or your flag side leg, which would be this case, my right leg. Back it up, have that leg on the horse, release that leg, then ride with your left leg right here. Ride with your left leg. Stop, back, now use my legs to go. I kind of use both legs to go forward, then I take my heels down to stop, I back up my horse, 
I let the cow pull my horse through the turn and then I ride. As the horse gets better, I'll step up to the flag and make it speed up so the horse gets through that turn and lifts his front end and makes it through that turn. The hard part comes when you make multiple moves. So what you want to make sure is that you're not always thinking turning. Because if you're always turning, let's say if you go like this and, uh, and all of a sudden you go to turn, it, sometimes what happens is the horse will resist and put his head the wrong direction or whatever like that. So what you want to do is you want to allow the horse to try to make that first move. So you get right here like this, you kind of say how you're looking at it, and then you move and then you ride right here. And then you stop. And then you step a little bit, then you ride right here and stop. A key to working a cow is hitting that stop before you make the second turn. You know, it's real easy to make a first turn like this. Real easy to make that turn. It's the second turn that's more difficult. So what we got to be careful to do is not get too rough with our hand when we're doing that. But try to leave your horse alone a little bit in between. Teach your horse to hook up to that flag and, and they teach him to hook up to that flag and then hit that stop. Hit, hit that stop. Tracking this cow a long way will benefit you going down that fence too. If you teach that horse to parallel that flag, will teach your horse to stay straight with a little bit of look into the cow, shoulder away so that he can make that good, solid turn. Shoulder up, nose in, make that turn. That's what you want to do. When you're practicing you can step all the way up close to that flag sometimes like this and teach that horse to round that body into that turn. What I try to do is not let my horse fall too far away from that flag. So when I get to this point right here, I kind of come through there and I try to track that flag like this, but try to stay on that line. Teaching your horse to read the cow far away and handle the cow up close really helps that horse be a good cow. Stay tuned, we'll be right back right after these messages. We're here for the hardworking, the resilient. We're for the people who measure their days by what needs to get done, not by ours where kids learn responsibility at a young age and generations work side by side. Where work doesn't pause for holidays or bad weather, it just gets harder. Where value and hard work means more than the clothes you wear. We're Kleinschmidt's Western Store, Higginsville, Missouri. Here's to the unbreakable spirit of today's ranchers. For all those running cow-calf operations, the American International Charolais Association is dedicated to strengthening your herd with the Charolais breed. The Charolais Advantage delivers more pounds for more profit. Getting Charolais genetics into commercial herds is the heart of a successful cattle operation. White hides bring an inherited benefit to commercial herds, providing advantages of growth and feedlot efficiency. It's white gold. For more information, go to charolaisusa.com. American Animal Health has what we call an unconditional commitment. Our team members have spent countless hours you know, relocating horses, finding horses, and, and helping those in need. Going and helping in the California wildfires. One of the passions we have as a team is not only helping horses, but helping people. And when we can put the two together, that really lights us up. It's, it's just who we are. G'day guys, Dan James here from Double Dan Horsemanship and I'm excited today to get to show you how that we go about working the Liberty Horse from the Ridden Horse. Okay, so we're going to have um, Avery come on around and come to the centre and we're going to start going through a series of the different steps in helping to start this out. As we said that we have uh, with the halter on our Liberty Horse right now and you're going to see us progress through to where we start to take it off. Okay, so the first step here that Avery's going to do is she's going to set herself up for what we call the heel, and that is sending the young horse around our ridden horse back to uh, the original position. So she backs up, lead rope goes over your ridden horse's head, 
Lead rope goes over the rider's head and she's looking for that young horse to come back up there beside her. Good job. Now, if you think that this in the beginning feels like it's complex, even watching it, you're right, it 100% is. It's one of the, the many times in working horses that you feel like that you need to be an octopus. Uh, one of the things that we always suggest here is having um, some good boots uh, on our ridden horse. That way, if our young horse happens to step up on top of our ridden horse's legs, that they are protected. In this case, we're using our iconoclast boots here. So Avery's sending again that young horse around, back to the other side, to the original start position, to the heel. Okay, Avery, when you're ready, we can go ahead and start sending out that young horse uh, around you. So get yourself kind of organised there. She'll bring that whip up and over. She's going to bring that whip down in between the ridden horse and the liberty horse. And you'll start to see that circle start to become larger. So she's kind of tapping her there at the shoulder uh, with our carriage driving whip, looking at sending uh, our liberty horse out from our ridden horse. And whenever you're ready and in your time, Avery, you go ahead and then go back to the heel. Good job, flicks that lead rope over, steps forward, all the way back to the original starting position. So remember, keep in mind when you're watching this that um, this is the first, uh, first time that Avery has uh, trained a, a young horse, you know, working the Liberty horse from the ridden horse, also that we're looking at Vera Green. We wanted to show you this part of the progression. When you're ready, go ahead and send them around again and then look for your change of direction, okay? Everybody that ever ends up doing these exercises and starting out uh, always can never believe how much easier it is when the time comes that we get to the point where that we're working that horse without the halter and lead rope on. It's just one less thing for you as the rider to have to be able to manage. That's looking really good. Changes the direction back, sends her out. Good, and we'll have her come around again, and then back to that original position, which is the heel. So you'll see Avery, when she's ready, she'll stop the ridden horse. She'll then flick the lead rope over, send her around with the whip, all the way around to the original position. And this may look like it's somewhat of a complex way to, to achieve these goals that we're looking for. However, what we have found over the years of doing this, that by going through and keeping that halter and lead rope on and helping those changes of directions and getting things to happen right, creates a foundation that we can always come back to. Okay, guys, so here we go. We've got the halter and the lead rope off. Avery's going to go ahead and head out around the round pen there uh, to the left. We're going to take and have that little... Uh, Liberty horse here come up between uh, the fence and between Avery and we just kind of start that out uh, with starting that Liberty horse there in that position. It just kind of helps us to be able to get them uh, thinking about where we want to be. Obviously as we progress then we get to where that we ask that horse to come to the other side, change directions and so forth. But you're seeing this at its very uh, early stages and, and where it's uh, beginning. Okay, so we'll do this uh, once more. This time we're going to incorporate a change of direction, okay? All right, so she bring, backs up, brings the whip up and over, sends the filly out, and you pick the time in which that you want to do the change of direction. You'll see that Avery's got that whip up there towards the shoulder. The whip's going to come down, forward, and around in helping for the change of direction. Now they're uh, tail to head or head to tail. She steps her around. She drops that whip straight back, turns to the left, brings that filly back around. She's going to then finish with the heel and the position in which that she started out to begin with. So she follows her around with that whip, all the way around back to the original starting position. Okay guys, so um, that was a you know, really good demonstration um, of a filly that's only had a short amount of time. Again, this is the first time that Avery has started one from the ridden horse. She's done a fantastic job here. You can understand the importance of going through and doing this with that halter and lead rope on. Getting that foundation solid and correct before you ever think about going through and doing this at Liberty. Remember, for more information, check out Double Dan Horsemanships. We hope to see you at one of our clinics. You're watching Better Horses, raising your horse experience.
Hi, I'm Tommy with Heritage Tractor. Whether you're looking to maintain your yard or your whole ranching operation, Heritage Tractor has John Deere mower and tractor packages that make work fly by. With a variety of horsepower and attachment configurations, we have a package that best fits your needs and budget. To learn more about these exclusive packages, visit us in store or online at HeritageTractor.com. Legendary products, extraordinary service. That's our heritage. We're here for the hardworking, the resilient. We're for the people who measure their days by what needs to get done, not by hours. Where kids learn responsibility at a young age and generations work side by side. Where work doesn't pause for holidays or bad weather. It just gets harder. Where value and hard work means more than the clothes you wear. We're Kleinschmidt's Western Store, Higginsville, Missouri. In 1956, the Pinto Horse Association of America was formed to welcome all types of equines and maintain their show records and pedigrees. PTHA currently has over 88,000 members with 157,000 registered Pintos. There are currently three separate registries, the Color Registry, the Solid Registry, and the Long Ear Registry. We welcome all levels of competition within a family-friendly environment. Become a member, register, and add value to your horse. For more information, check out the website, PintoWorld.com. Well, good afternoon. Uh, Craig Cameron here, deep in the heart of Texas. I uh, got a great day, great weather for uh, working with horses. You know, uh, one thing I get asked a lot is uh, people say, Craig, how do you get your horse to stay put when you get down and say walk off? You do it by practice and through repetition and showing the horse what it is that you want and what it is that you don't want. But just about like anything else, it starts with small steps. You know, I'm a big advocate, and you've probably seen me uh, do some hobble training with my horses, something I believe in, and it's something that can get them started standing ground tied. And that's what we call it when we're able to get off the horse, and if we walk around and do something or visit or go check something else or do some work here, the horse stays put and does not leave. He can learn that through repetition and the way that you offer life up to this horse. You can see I carry a set of hobbles here on the horse just like that in case I need them. And as I'm teaching these horses from time to time, just like saddling, unsaddling, sometimes I just put them on where he's learning about standing ground, ground tied, learning patience, learning to give to pressure, learning to follow a feel. And that's what we're all looking for with these horses. We're dealing with that mind right there. Remember that mind that controls his body, his legs, and his feet. So how can I start this? I get off and I'm gonna start, what did I tell you? Small steps. So as I go to walk off, I guarantee you, this horse, he'll, he'll by nature, after a while, wanna come with me. Just like a dog, I'm just gonna put my hands up create some energy and tell him stay put whoa stay put don't follow me a lot of people get concerned well Craig I've been teaching this horse to come to me all this time I promise you he can learn the difference so I get this horse to stay put stay 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 see him watching me and I just walk off and then I walk back I walk back before he can come to me now I'm gonna walk at different angles that was more toward the gate, which would him be him more at wanting to come with me. Trust me, they know where the gates are. They know where the barn is. They know where the other horses are. So all these little things to kind of think about all the time. So I'm gonna step off here, stay. See how he watches me? And I like that, I like that a lot. Stay put, and then I come on back. And pretty soon, he's going to learn exactly what it is that I want. If this horse goes to leave, shoot, I catch him up, put him back, or maybe push him around where I turn that into work, where staying becomes the easiest and best thing he can do. Now, his nature might want to be want to turn and look at me. I'm going to walk off this direction. Here, stay. I use that hand. Stay, stay. See him take that one foot, but he's watching me. He knows he's beginning to learn those hand signals. Stay put. He took that one step. And I don't want to be too critical and don't 
work for perfection. So don't expect him to think like you and don't work with him or try to teach him like a human being. Learn to speak horse to the horse. And after a while, you're just going to be amazed at what you get accomplished with these horses. And when they learn to stand ground tight, you're going to love it. And I guarantee your friends will be amazed and they're going to say, how did you do that? Hey, you know how you did it. You presented it to this horse in a way he could understand. Gave him the time it took for him to understand. Lots of repetition. Hey, work with your horse, not against your horse. See things from his perspective and understand his trust and acceptance. Always working on that. Hey, I'm Craig Cameron. Really appreciate you joining me. We've got lots more coming and I'll see you next time. Hey, cowboys and cowgirls, don't go anywhere. We have more better horses coming your way. Here's to the unbreakable spirit of today's ranchers. For all those running cow-calf operations, the American International Charolais Association is dedicated to strengthening your herd with the Charolais breed. The Charolais Advantage delivers more pounds for more profit. Getting Charolais genetics into commercial herds is the heart of a successful cattle operation. White hides bring an inherited benefit to commercial herds, providing advantages of growth and feedlot efficiency. It's white gold. For more information, go to charolaisusa.com. We're here for the hardworking, the resilient. We're for the people who measure their days by what needs to get done, not by hours. Where kids learn responsibility at a young age and generations work side by side. Where work doesn't pause for holidays or bad weather. It just gets harder. Where value and hard work means more than the clothes you wear. We're Klein Schmidt's Western Store, Higginsville, Missouri. In 1956, the Pinto Horse Association of America was formed to welcome all types of equines and maintain their show records and pedigrees. PTHA currently has over 88,000 members with 157,000 registered Pintos. There are currently three separate registries, the Color Registry, the Solid Registry, and the Long Ear Registry. We welcome all levels of competition within a family-friendly environment. Become a member, register, and add value to your horse. For more information, check out the website, PintoWorld.com. My name is Nathan Smith and I work for Show Me Christian Youth Home and I run our Leadership U program here in Lamont, Missouri. We have a program here that's been now for about six years and uh, we have about 50 kids that are in our program here. Uh, many of our kids live here on campus. Most of our kids live here with us. Uh, we run uh, it's basically an alternative to foster care. For whatever reason, they can't live with their, their mom and dad and so they need a place to live and they are this is a residential um, facility where kids come and live and many of them will graduate from here and they'll be here with us for years um, and so we have a, a opportunity over a long period of time often with many of our kids to really uh, hone their skills and and we put them on these horses uh, to to do that you know a lot of our kids come from pretty traumatic backgrounds uh, they have they have experienced neglect they have experienced abuse. They have experienced being uh, left behind and feeling unwanted. They've experienced anger and they've experienced frustration and all of these things. Uh, you know, when our kids and the kids get around the horses, it's just an opportunity for them to, um, to pass on something good to another uh, being, in this case, a horse. They, of course, the kids always love uh, spending time with their horse. You know, um, I found that uh, you know, being able to reward their horse and petting their horse. And um, we deal with obstacles and, you know, our kids, uh, you know, do a lot with obstacles where they're having to cross tilting bridges or very narrow bridges or, you know, things that are not your average uh, obstacles and the horses don't want to do them. And, and so these kids get to, to, we try to talk to them about how do you create, uh, how do you make this obstacle seem like the place that that horse wants to be and creating a positive place for that horse and helping our kids realize that they need to stay facing forward. Um, 
it, that's a that's a really important concept with kids that have trauma in their backgrounds, uh, difficulties in the past, things that could get them stuck. Where they could they could think, you know, I, this has happened to me in my past, and I'll never be any different. And it's really important when when we work with horses that we're looking forward. Uh, whether you're leading a horse or riding a horse, that you're not worried about what's behind you because that's, there's nothing back there for you. And I remind the kids all the time, there's nothing behind you. This is, everything is ahead of you. And that you don't have to be stuck where you were. And you don't have to be uh, just like your parents were or just like uh, whoever that you knew or that you lived with. So we have four core principles that we try to build our program on so that our kids are getting a structured uh, means of how they're uh, improving their leadership skills. So our first principle is service. And uh, anybody that's been around horses very long knows that there's a lot of service that goes in, a lot of work that has to be done, a lot of needs that be, need to be taken care of. Then we want to use knowledge. And uh, most of our kids come to us and don't have any uh, previous experience with horses. So we want to, we start in, in, infusing that knowledge into them. Uh, things that, how to lead a horse, how to put a halter on the horse, how to tie their horse up safely, how to avoid getting stepped on. Now all these things that are very, very important when you're around horses that we're going to start pouring this knowledge into them to make them a qualified leader for their horse. Uh, then it's really about building their confidence and that's our third principle. Um, if you can know a lot of things, you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you don't have the confidence to put that into practice, then it doesn't work out very good. Uh, head knowledge that, that, is, uh, that is then acted out with a, with a lack of confidence or timidity doesn't work out. And, and lastly, we'd love for them to have wisdom. Um, and we try to train these kids so that when they get out into the real world that we have given them a place and a process where they can learn these kind of leadership skills. So I think that all these things give opportunities for our kids to heal and realize that they, uh, they don't have to be stuck. They don't have to give in to the things that are easy. And they don't have to just feel like they're just a, uh, a victim of their circumstances or situations. That they can actually make a difference and then they can change things for themselves. Hey, thank you for watching Better Horses. And if you miss any of our shows, check us out at betterhorses.com where you can see all our episodes. You can also follow us on Facebook or listen to any of our podcasts right from your mobile device. And don't forget our newspaper coming out five times a year. You're gonna love it.